Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to do something really interesting, which is I'm going to prove the product rule for differentiation. And this is the product rule for ordinary differentiation, which I have down here. This WTS is one to show. So I want to show the product for ordinary differentiation, but I'm going to use, to prove that, I'm going to use the chain rule for partial differentiation. Okay, and that sounds a little weird, but the point is, if you don't use the chain rule for partial differentiation and directly try to prove this, you have to prove it using limits and some very... Uh, some some manipulation which is not very hard, but it's very it's some algebraic manager. It's not intuitively clear what what's happening. Whereas this proof I'm going to give you is really intuitive uh, once you get it. Okay, so so here I'm thinking of so I have these two functions f and g of a single variable, and I'm going to try to think of the product of the functions as a function of those two functions. So f x and g x are my two functions. I call u and v as those are the variables which they go to, and I'm trying to think of of, I'm trying to think of, of the product of these, that, that I, I define a new function of two variables, it just multiplies them. Okay, and now I define uh, h of u comma v, so, 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 so I basically have this kind of picture, I have x, x, I have u, v, this depends where I have, so g, and this is where h, and you can talk. Okay, now what is what is the left side? It's just dw dx, right? So what is dw dx using the chain rule for partial differentiation? What's dw dx using the chain rule for partial? Uh, the partial derivative of x with respect to u. Wait, w with respect to u. Yeah. Times. Times du dx. Thus. Uh, dw dv by du dx. By times? dv dx. dv dx. Sorry, I heard it wrong the first time. Okay, so it's dw du times du dx plus dw dv times dv dx. Right? So we are trying to figure out how w depends on x. There's two pathways. One is via u, one is via v. The pathway via u, you get this product. The pathway via v, you get this product. Good. What is partial derivative of w with respect to u? So, so basically, this is this is just saying h sub u of u u comma v. It's just oops. It's h sub u of u comma v. Is that clearly? Yeah. Okay. What is h sub u of u? So if, if I if I give you this function u v, and you don't know the product rule for differentiation, but it's just if I'm differentiating, so even without using the product rule, just by the fact that v is a constant, right? When you differentiate with respect to u, what's the derivative of uv? V. V. So this becomes v, v times, times du dx, so just f prime x, plus what is the partial derivative of w with respect to v? So the derivative of this thing with respect to v holding u constant. U. That's u. And then times? G prime. Okay. And now what's v? Uh, Gx. And what's u? Uh, fx. Okay. And now if you just rewrite the this product in the correct order, you get exactly what you want. Okay, so this is a proof. So we prove the product rule for differentiation using the chain rule for partial differentiation. And that seems like a somewhat roundabout thing. But actually this proof, I mean, you could also prove it directly using limits, you know, without using this. But this proof really tells you something. It, it really sort of captures the reason why this rule is true. Why is this rule true? Why is it true that the derivative product is like this? Well, the way to think about it is, when you're trying to differentiate this product with respect to x, the the way it changes with respect to there could be it could change for two reasons. One is that f is changing, and the other is that g, g is changing, right? The part which is which is due to the changes in f is given by this product. Okay, that's this part. That's this product, and the and the part of the change of the product which is due to changes in g is captured by this product. So this product rule for distribution is actually sort of the reason it's true is the chain rule. Right? It's, it's basically you're, you're capturing 
these two pieces separately. One piece is capturing the, the change in this due to changes in F and the other piece is capturing changes in due to changes in G. So maybe I'll make a picture. So, so imagine that you have this rectangle. You have sides Fx and Gx. Okay. Now I change x a bit. When I change x a bit, then fx changes and gx changes. So maybe fx changes a bit and gx changes a bit. Okay, so now I get a new rectangle. Okay, now to figure out how does the area of the new rectangle differ from the area of the old rectangle. Okay, now part of that difference is due to the, the change in the f part. Okay, so part of it is here. Okay, and the other part is here. There's this, this tiny piece here, but that in the limit, when you do the limit and all that actually doesn't contribute anything because it's like two, it's a product of two very small things. So that goes to zero. So really the contribution to the change is due to these two pieces. One is due to the change in the F value. One is due to the change in zero. Now what's the area of this? It's uh, the change in F times G, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm writing delta because it's not yet actually the delta, the derivative will come in the limit. And here it's, it's F times the change in G and sort of that's why you are getting this form, right? So one, uh, so you're sort of figuring out the contributions of each piece and, and then using them. So the chain rule for partial differentiation generalizes the product rule for differentiation and, and gives an explanation for why it's true.